All right, just checking. Can everyone in the room hear me now? All right, great. So what have you guys thought of the class so far today? Like it? Yeah. Great. So while we're waiting for this thing to get up, any more ideas that people would want to try pitching? Well, looks like we're pretty much ready to go. So, all right. We're computer science majors. Congratulations. Our best friends are probably our laptops. And God knows how often we actually have to go out and endure natural light. And thanks to recent breakthroughs in virtual reality technology, the need to actually leave our rooms has been all but negated. So I forgive you if you're wondering, what's the point of this? Why do I, a computer programmer, actually have to go out and talk to other people and pitch my idea? Well, consider that you have an incredible idea, like Kumaran's Tinder for food, right? One that could be worth millions. Millions of cents, maybe, but millions nonetheless. Well, that's not going to go anywhere unless you can actually get it out, get funding for it, and pull together an amazing team. So that's where pitching comes in. Without nailing a pitch, an amazing revolutionary idea might fall flat and never go anywhere. Now, pitching isn't just something like you see in HBO's Silicon Valley, where people stand around in a room claiming that massive amounts of funding and millions of users are just going to magically fall out of the sky. Pitching can also be going to lunch with a friend and running your ideas past them. Or a pitch could be in 30 seconds when you're on an elevator with an important person, bouncing your ideas off of him. So what we're going to tell you today is how to actually frame your ideas and deliver them to an audience, specifically in a way that will help you out in your projects for this semester. So first of all, you might ask, well, how do I think of an amazing, incredible idea? This process is called design thinking. The first point of it is to keep your audience in mind. This is the target audience for whatever product or project you're going to be developing. Uh, doing this really lets you, you know, get into the shoes of your target audience, think of what problems they would be facing, and how they would want them to be fixed. And this lets you develop a technology that would appeal to them a great deal and, be, and basically maximize its success. Secondly, you want to have a clear problem that you're trying to solve. This is the reason people are going to end up using whatever you develop, so that it can make their lives easier. But despite having a clear, specific problem, you don't want to make your process and implementation of it too detailed. If you leave it a little vague, you give your idea room to grow, expand, adapt in the future if unforeseen circumstances ever pop up. So what you're aiming for is a clear, concise problem that you want to solve, but an implementation that's open-ended enough that it can grow in the future if need be. And obviously, these are, the easy, these are easiest to showcase when you have a functional prototype. That's why we have three hackathons planned through the course of the semester, in which you and your teams will get to come together and showcase all of the progress that you've made on your projects so that you can pitch to the class and anyone else watching on why your projects are really worth the effort you're putting into them. All right, first of all, can you guys hear me? Yeah, no, okay, cool. So, quick hypothetical question. Who would win the WWE Super Slam? One John Cena or three John Cenas? No one said Steve Laval. That guy does everything, and he's clearly the one who would win. <laughs> so you all fail. All right. Second hypothetical question. Uh, how many of you, got, you, most of you said you guys programmed before coming here. How many of you guys have programmed in a team? Nice. Cool. So that's exactly the point of this question, is three John Cena's or Steve Laval would clearly win over one John Cena, right? The, a, a team will overpower an army of one. And CS196 is going to try and push you guys to do a project 
that you have never done before. And it will be out of any one single person's scope. You guys will have to have a team in order to be able to bounce ideas off of each other, to code review, to make sure you guys are on top of things. You don't want to be able to you know, say, I'm going to make the next Oculus Rift by yourself and then just get lost in the flurry of all that you have to do. We want to make you guys pitch your idea in order that you be able to get a team and so that you could actually make that awesome project or succeed in that vision you want. So, when you'll be pitching your idea, we will be borrowing from the books from the advertisement, advertisement majors and the communication majors because they figured this out, engineers have not. Uh, the successful sequence that we are using is the Monroe's Motivated Sequence. It's a very popular and it's a very famous sequence. And while it seems linear here, it's not as linear as you think. You just need to make sure that you hit the requirements. The first requirement is that you get the attention of the audience. The second requirement is that you provide a need to the audience, you know, get empathy resonating with you and the speaker. Then, after you get the need established, you provide a solution. You, you show up with the idea. And lastly, you bring a call to action. You tell the audience what to do. So now, obviously, when you're going to show up here, you want to establish the, the attention. You want to show up here and say, hey, look at me, right? Because you people have, everyone here has had that kind of conversation or that lecture with a professor who was just, well, high school teachers, uh, where it's just like so dry or so boring that you just lose focus completely and you just zone out, right? If you're going to show up here and pitch your idea to everyone else out here, you want to make sure they pay attention and join you in your vision because otherwise you're wasting everybody's time. So when you show up here, you want to establish that attention and maintain it throughout the whole pitch, right? And you can, you can you know, get the attention however you think it's appropriate. You could be as loud and aggressive as Billy Mays. You could be funny. Whatever you think works, make sure it's appropriate to the pitch and be, you know, everything will be gold. Great, you got your audience's attention. Now it's on you to try and maintain it. This is where the second phase of Monroe's motivated sequence comes in, need. Establishing a sense of urgency. This is going to convince the audience why it's important for them to listen to you. What problem you're going to solve for them. Now you need to think of a problem that really resonates with the audience, because that's going to make them far more likely to actually hear you out and care about what you have to say. This problem would definitely vary from audience to audience. So, for example, let's say you're pitching your idea for a company to a bunch of venture capitalists. This problem is going to be market capital. What you're trying to solve is the question of how you're going to make them rich. But for this class, you might have some different problems that you want to solve. Because while you might make billions out of whatever project you develop for this course, that's not the main reason we're doing it. To your fellow students, the projects that would work best would be realizing ideas that you really believe in, stuff that you care about, solving things that you think could really make a difference in the world. It could be that working on these projects would give your teammates valuable skills, ones that would help them in future job interviews, when they're talking with recruiters, skills that would be really impressive to put on their resume so that they are much more successful in their future endeavors. Or really, to just develop something that you think is interesting, even if it's not something that's going to change the world, something that you feel very passionately about and think would be fun to work on. These are the types of things that you want to emphasize in the pitches to your classmates so that they're more likely to come and join your group and help you make a great team. You establish the need you bring up this problem and now the audience will be hungry for a solution, right? They, you don't want to leave them hanging. Don't tease them, that's rude. When you, when you present this problem or this need, whatever it is, you follow in and you go in with the kill and you bring your idea. But when you bring out your idea, you have to make sure, and this has to be very explicit, why your idea is the best solution, why your idea works, and make sure that there are no prevailing questions about the philosophy of your idea, right? 
if I showed up here and I said, I'm going to change the world with big data, that means absolutely nothing. And you will just wash away, right? So when you are constructing the pitch and you're coming here to find co-founders, you have to make sure that your solution makes sense in the context of the problem and make sure that everyone is satisfied with what they hear. And finally, it's time for your rallying cry. This is where you have, this is where you have a call to action. Tell your audience basically why you chose them in particular to pitch your idea to. Where you tell them what it is that they individually can do about your pitch. Again, this is going to differ from audience to audience. If you're pitching to venture capitalists, it could be to just fund your product so that you can get it on the market, develop it fully, and make it the best that you can. If you're pitching to potential customers, that's obvious. You want them to buy your product. If you're raising awareness for some type of cause that you really care about, the call to action could be convincing the audience to go out, talk to their friends and family, and help raise awareness themselves. In this class, your call to action should really be something that will convince the rest of the class to come up and pitch themselves to you, to get in contact with you, and let you know not only why they would benefit from joining your group, but what your project stands to benefit from having them on the team. So this call to action is really important because you need to convince people to come and reach out to you so that you can get a great team together and make the best project that you can. When you're pitching, the, the major pitfall that most people fall into is, right, is fluff, right? When it, I'm sure we've all had an essay or whatever and we're just like, oh man, I'm, I'm running short. I'll just throw in something there so it looks good. Well, you know, the teacher probably knew that it was fluff and the audience will be the same. Don't say empty things that mean nothing. You're just wasting everyone's time. You're probably going to lose their attention, and they're probably not going to believe in your vision as to what you want to pitch here. So, you know, terms like big data and machine learning are fine if you actually define them and make sure that they're relevant to your project. If I, again, as I said, if I'm going to change the world with big data, that literally means nothing. But if I'm making a project that requires scraping the website, websites across the internet, and using the big data, still kind of a bad, you know, still kind of bad there, it's at least a little bit more descriptive. All right, you can use technical terms all you want in, in whatever pitch, but you have to make sure that it makes sense and it's coherent and it's not just pointless jargon. Um, it's not just technical terms that you want to avoid, though. You also want to make sure that you're not just saying other fluff like, this is amazing, this is awesome, let's change the world. That you're wasting everyone's time, and it's honestly disrespectful. You guys are the best of the CS class. You know, treat everyone with the same amount of respect. All right, so now that we've basically learned about pitching and how to go about doing it, you guys have already heard a few pitches from your peers. But now we're going to have another fellow core staff, Peter Wu, come up and give a sample pitch for something that could be a very viable 196 project. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Peter, and um, first, first rule of computer science, business casual never means business casual. Uh, so let me, guys, let me give you guys an example pitch. So my name's Peter, and I suck at writing. I am a very, very mediocre writer. That's why I'm studying computer science. So, I have this idea. What I want to do is fix my writing, but I don't want to put months or years into practicing writing. I just want to study computer science. So, why don't I use computers to help me write my essays, or research papers, or emails, or whatever it is? I've come to realize that, I've come to realize that um, writing is something that's very pivotal and existing in today's society. So, how do I take myself from Peter Wu to William Shakespeare in like five minutes. Well, it's a pretty long journey, but here's a start. So my idea is to take something that searches the web. So let's say I'm writing an essay on Jane Eyre. God, I hate Jane Eyre, but whatever. <laughs> um, so I, I'm writing an essay on Jane Eyre, and I'm on paragraph two. I'm stumped on one of the sentences. I don't know what to write, and I don't know how I want to word it. So let's go with my product. What my product will do is go search the web for essays on Jane Eyre, whether it's written by professors, other students, anyone that's smart enough to have their paper on the internet. 
So what, what it's going to do is look at these papers, analyze similar sentences in the similar context, just like I did. And what it's going to do is it's going to basically fix my sentence and output something that I should write in my sentence. By doing this, my sentence no longer sucks, and I'll actually be decent. So um, that's my idea, and I'd love it if you guys join my team. And that's a sample page. Other than that, I'll be passing on.